Hello and welcome to the 22nd week of season 23, Season of the Wish, starting on April 23rd, 2024. This week sees Into the Light bring with it two more focusable weapons for the brave arsenal in the new game mode Onslaught. These are, from Season 16, Vow the Disciple Raid, the Arc Waveframe Grenade Launcher Forbearance, which has a base blast radius of 100, velocity of 74 and stability of 27. It can roll with bait and switch, chain reaction and desperate measures, with disruption break, ambitious assassin and surplus. And from Season 5, Season of the Forge, the Void Adaptive Frame Machine Gun, the Hammerhead which has a base impact of 41, a range of 60 and stability of 60. It can roll with Killing Tally, Desperate Measures and Onslaught, with Rewind Rounds, Envious Assassin and Rampage. Both weapons have the origin trait of Indomitability, where Final Blows grant Grenade Energy when playing a Light subclass or Melee Energy when playing a Dark subclass. If you're unfamiliar, Onslaught is Destiny 2's new PvE wave-based defence activity, where three Guardians defend the last city from increasingly difficult waves of the Witnesses' forces. On the way, Guardians will have to slay enemies, earn resources, build defences and sabotage pyramid ships. To find out more, check out our Onslaught Explained video in the description. Into the Light also brings with it a new title, new triumphs and the Brave Seal. To unlock the title of Brave, you will have to complete 10 triumphs. These are Brave Collector, complete all Brave Weapon Quests. Grimoire Gatherer 8, collect all 8 Grimoire Cards. Lord of Reputation, reach maximum reputation with Lord Shax. So many waves. Complete 300 waves in Onslaught. Breaking the charge. Defeat each of the three final bosses in Onslaught. Trying to budget. Purchase 40 defenses in Onslaught. Not on your watch. Complete the fifth wave set in Onslaught on normal difficulty. Brave Weapon Master. Defeat 900 opponents with the Brave Weapons. Defeating Guardians grants more progress. Triumphant Whisper. Complete the exotic mission The Whisper. And Triumphant Outbreak. Complete the exotic mission Zero Hour. Moving on, we have our Legacy Rotation starting with the Forsaken expansion. Ready if you are. Let's see what's out there. The Dreaming City this week is at a strong curse level, which means Petra Venge can be found in Rio Silvia, and has the Dark Monastery mission for the next week. The Blind Well features Taken Enemies and the Plague, Ina Mina. The Ascendant Challenge this week will be Ourobora, which can be located over in the Affiliates Rest Lost Sector on the Dreaming City. Next up, the Shadowkeep expansion. On the Moon, the weekly story mission is in the deep, the Trove Guardian and the Wandering Nightmare, Jax, Claws of Ziva Arath, are both located at the Hellmouth. And the Nightmare Hunts this week will be Crota, Despair, Fogoth, Fear, and Ghoul, Rage. For our Beyond Light expansion, on Europa this week, Praxis the Technocrat will be the Empire Hunt, Cadmus Ridge will be the Eclipse Zone, and the Exo Challenge will be Safeguard. For the 30th Anniversary expansion, Death of Eternity Legendary Rounds are Hive, Fallen, and for the final round, Valister Arc. The loot rotation will be on week 1's rotation, with the Scatterhorn armor set and the Wild Hunt armor set being available. The weapons available this week will be the Arc Lightweight Frame Bow, Arsenic Bite 4B, the Arc Adaptive Frame Heavy Grenade Launcher, Blast Batu, the Solar Position Frame Linear Fusion Rifle, Corsair's Wrath, the Void Wave Frame Energy Grenade Launcher, Deafening Whisper, the Kinetic Adaptive Frame Hand Cannon, Dire Promise, the Kinetic Position Frame Sidearm, Enigma's Draw, the Kinetic Lightweight Frame Submachine Gun Escape Velocity, the Arc Adaptive Frame Pulse Rifle Giant 7 Rifle, the Kinetic Position Frame Submachine Gun Friction Fire, the Void Position Frame Scout Rifle Royal Chase, the Kinetic Aggressive Frame Hand Cannon True Prophecy, and the Solar Adaptive Frame Fusion Rifle Timelines Vertex. For the Witch Queen expansion, the Witch Queen weekly story mission is the Ritual, where the modifier is Fire Pit, as well as Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. Also this week you will have Altar of Reflections Catalyst and Altar of Reflections Pact. The Wellspring activity has been updated to include a featured Throne World weapon, Veritas Armour and a weapon pattern as its rewards. For the Lightful expansion, the weekly mission is First Contact with Extra Shields, Lock Loadouts and Extra Champions, Barrier and Unstoppable Champions, Void Threat, Scorched Earth, Overcharged Weapons, Stasis and Solar Surges, overcharged shotguns and galvanized on hero difficulty only. The partition mission will be hard reset, contest mode enabled with barrier and unstoppable champions, arc threat, martyr and empath modifiers, void and strand shields with stasis and solar surges. And the vex incursion this week will be liming harbor. In addition the weekly lightful reset also refreshes the pinnacle drop for the node override avalon exotic mission on the EDZ and the star-crossed exotic mission in the helm. For the season of the deep all three fishing ponds are now exotic all week. Raids and Dungeons 
The Crota's end raid challenge this week is the fourth encounter, Crota, son of Oryx, called All for One. Crota's overshield must be destroyed in full within about 3 seconds. Plus, if you complete the weekly challenge on Master, you'll get an adept weapon. The adept weapon you get is a random drop, but works on a knockout system. You will get a new one with every challenge you complete every week until you've unlocked them all. The Root of Nightmares raid challenge this week is the first encounter, Cataclysm, called Illuminated Torment. This is where every tormentor must be killed by a player with a Field of Light buff. The King's Fall raid challenge this week is the fourth encounter, Daughters of Oryx, called Under Construction. Players cannot stand on the same plate twice in a single phase. The Vow the Disciple challenge this week is the second encounter, The Caretaker, called Base Information, where runners cannot pick up more than one stack of knowledge on each run. The Vault of Glass challenge this week is the fifth encounter, Atheon, called Ensembler's Refrain. Each player teleported can only destroy one oracle in each spawn set. The Deepstone Crypt challenge this week is the fourth encounter, Tanix, called The Core 4. Guardians must dunk all four cores before each DPS phase. And the God of Salvation challenge this week is the fourth encounter, Sanctified Mind, called 0 to 100, where you must fully fill each conflux with 30 motes within 10 seconds of initially banking the first set of motes. Your pinnacle raid will be the last wish over on the Dreaming City, which means all challenges will be available for each encounter. These are the first encounter, Kali, called Summoning Ritual. Players must activate and cleanse all 9 plates, then kill all 9 knights and ogres before damaging Kali. The second encounter, Shirochi, called Witch Witch. Guardians must not get hit or take damage from Shirochi's Arc Blast. The third encounter, Morgoth, called Forever Fight. Players must not kill the small ogres during the encounter. The fourth encounter, Vault, called Keep Out. Guardians must ensure that no Might of Riven Knights make it to the center chamber during the Vault fight. And the fifth encounter, Riven, called Strength of Memory, where Guardians must not shoot the same Riven Eye twice. Also, with the Last Wish being the featured raid, this does mean that you can farm the final boss for a chance at the exotic heavy fusion rifle, 1000 Voices. The pinnacle dungeon for this week will be the duality over on the derelict Leviathan on the moon. And our exotic mission rotator will be Operation Seraph Shield, with the Revision Zero exotic pulse rifle being the main reward. Craftable weapons available from this mission include the Stasis Aggressive Frame Linear Fusion Rifle Fire and Forget, the Arc Lightweight Frame Bow Tripwire Canary, the Stasis Aggressive Burst Pulse Rifle Disparity, the Arc Adaptive Frame Trace Rifle Path of Least Resistance, the Solar Aggressive Glaive Judgment of Kelgoroth, the Void Rapid Fire Frame Machine Gun Retrofit Escapade, the Void Precision Frame Hand Cannon iKalos HC, the Solar Rapid Fire Frame Shotgun iKalos SG, the Solar Rapid Fire Frame Sniper iColos SR, and the Arc Aggressive Frame Submachine Gun iColos SMG, with the Warmind's Avatar Armor Set. Plus, the exotic mission The Whisper is available over in the Into the Light node. Next up, challenges. We have now had all 66 challenges over the first 10 weeks of the season. So, as a reminder, if you complete 63 out of the 66, you can get a large pile of bright dust to spend at the Eververse store in game. Here's a few that you might have missed that you might want to get completed in the next few months. Boss Battle Defeat bosses in Strikes or Vanguard Playlists. Bonus progress is granted for defeating bosses on Hero Difficulty or higher. 4. Challenge XP++ and Bright Dust. Over Specialize. Get 100 final blows with weapons using special ammo in ritual activities. Earn bonus progress by defeating Guardians. 4. Challenge XP++ and Bright Dust. Darkest Nightfall. Complete any Nightfall Strike on Hero Difficulty or higher. Bonus progress is granted for completing Nightfalls above Hero Difficulty. 4. Challenge XP++, Bright Dust and a Nightfall Weapon. Taking All Challenges. Complete Weekly Playlist Challenges. 4. Challenge XP Plus and Bright Dust. Throne World Activities. In the Throne World, complete bounties and earn progress by completing patrols, public events, and looting lost sectors. 4. Challenge XP and Bright Dust. Round and round we go. Generate orbs of power in Vanguard, Gambit, or Crucible playlists. 4. Challenge XP Plus 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 and Bright Dust. Absolutely stunning. Stun 50 champions. 4. Challenge XP Plus 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 and Bright Dust. And Mod Collector. Unlock 12 artifact mods. 4. Challenge XP Plus Plus and Bright Dust. Hello. Hello. As a reminder, your daily loss sector will show you a flag outside which will give you details of threats, shields, champions and exotic armor you will find inside. But if you're new to the game or using an alternate character and can't find the flag outside, you will have to run through the loss sector normally to have it show up on your map as a legend slash master. Which you can either do solo or with a fire team. But you'll only be able to earn a chance at the exotic drop when completing solo. This season we'll see the introduction of gunsmith engrams, as well as the selection of foundry weapons for completing legend and master loss sectors while solo. 
with Legend being a 70% chance to Master being 100%, assuming the Guardian is thorough enough to leave no champion standing. Thorough completions on Master difficulty will also have the advantage of weapons dropping an additional perk in either the 3rd or 4th column. The weapons available from the Lost Sectors are grouped into 4 weapons per day over 4 days, and after the 4th day the cycle repeats back to the first set. The following weapons will be available from the Lost Sectors during the Season of the Wish. Day 1, the Strand High Impact Frame Fusion Rifle Nox Perennial 5. The Strand Adaptive Frame Auto Rifle Old Sterling. The Solar Rapid Fire Frame Grenade Launcher Marcillion C. And the Stasis Amalon Adaptive Frame Sidearm Senua SI6. Day 2, the Stasis High Impact Frame Pulse Rifle Cyhomatic 5. The Strand Precision Frame Scout Rifle Glissando 47. The Strand Vice Rapid Fire Frame Sniper Rifle Urakanji. And the Arc Adaptive Frame Sword Nazaruddin. Day 3, the Solar Lightweight Frame Sidearm Heliocentric QSC. The Kinetic Aggressive Frame Sniper Rifle Last Foray. The Arc Aggressive Frame Shotgun Hand in Hand. And the Kinetic Lightweight Frame Pulse Rifle Battle Scar. Day 4, the Nadir Void Adaptive Frame Sword Geodetic HSM. The Arc Aggressive Frame Hand Cannon Combined Action. The Void Waveframe Grenade Launcher Harsh Language. And the Solar Adaptive Frame Auto Rifle Coronatcher 22. This week's rotation will start on Weapon Set 4 on Tuesday's reset. Tuesday, April 23rd will be Buggy 15 on Europa for Exotic Gauntlets, Void Threat, Solar and Stasis Surges, Void Shields, Shocker Modifier, Overcharge Grenade Launchers with Barrier and Overload Champions. Wednesday, April 24th will be Concealed Void on Europa for Exotic Chests, Solar Threat, Solar and Stasis Surges, Void and Solar Shields, Arachno Modifier, Overcharge Trace Rifles with Barrier and Overload Champions. Thursday, April 25th will be Thriller Drone on Neptune for Exotic Helmets, Void Threat, Solar and Stasis Surges, Arc and Void Shields, Shocker Modifier, Overcharge Grenade Launchers with Barrier and Overload Champions. Friday, April 26th will be Gilded Precept on Neptune for Exotic Boots, Arc Threat, Solar and Strand Surges, Void and Solar Shields, Scorched Earth Modifier, Overcharge Glaives with Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. Saturday, April 27th will be the Scavenger's Den on the EDZ for Exotic Gauntlets, Solar Threat, Solar and Strand Surges, Arc Shields, Scorched Earth Modifier, Overcharge Fusion Rifles with Barrier and Overload Champions. Sunday, April 28th will be Skydot 4 on the EDZ for Exotic Chess, Solar Threat, Solar and Strand Surges, Void Shields, Pestilence Modifier, Overcharge Shotguns with Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. And finally, back round to Monday, April 29th will be the Quarry on the EDZ for Exotic Helmets, Void Threat, Solar and Strand Surges, Void and Solar Shields, Scorched Earth Modifier, Overcharge Grenade Launchers with Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. Lead the way. Our 22nd featured Nightfall will see face against Gorgath in the reprised Lake of Shadows over on the EDZ, where you have a chance to get a Pinnacle Engram if you complete the Nightfall with a score of 200k or more. This Nightfall is free to play. You'll be able to earn high-end gear for your characters including the Nightfall featured weapon, exotic gear, enhancement cores, enhancement prisms, ascendant shards and adept Nightfall ciphers. The higher the Nightfall difficulty, the more common the drop will be, with the featured weapon and exotic gear being uncommon at hero difficulty to being common with ascendant shards in Grand Masters. Legend and Lower Nightfalls will have 5 barrier and 5 unstoppable champions, with 5 solar, 2 void and 1 arc shields. Masters and GMs will have 10 barrier and 9 unstoppable, with 13 solar, 6 void and 5 arc shields. Your Nightfall modifiers are Hero difficulty maximum effective level 1765, matchmaking is available, enemies have extra shields, champions foe, you will face barrier and unstoppable champions. You can either use intrinsic exotics, use a subclass debuff, or unlock anti-champion mods from the seasonal artifact. Arc threat, 25% increase in incoming arc damage. Overcharge weapons, weapons overcharged from the seasonal artifact are active in this activity. Kinetic weapons do increase damage when your subclass element matches an active surge. Solar surge, 25% bonus to outgoing solar damage. Stasis surge, 25% bonus to outgoing stasis damage. Overcharge machine guns, 25% bonus damage with the machine guns. Galvanize, combatants have more health and are more difficult to stun. Legend difficulty, maximum effective level 1815, includes all previous modifiers except galvanized. No matchmaking, equipment locked, you will be unable to change your equipment once the mission starts. Denial, taken vandals have more shields. Epitaph, taken enemies drop blight geysers on death. Master difficulty, maximum effective level 1820, includes all previous modifiers except galvanize. Champions mob, this difficulty adds more champion enemies. Togetherness, both health regen is reduced if near another player, health regen is increased. Grand Master difficulty, maximum effective level 1815 includes all previous modifiers except galvanized, togetherness, and denial. 
Join in progress disabled. Extinguish if your fire team falls in a restricted zone, your team is returned to orbit. Limited revives. Gain additional revives by defeating champions, up to a maximum of 20. Contest mode, which caps your power level to make enemies more of a challenge. And chafe. The radar is disabled. To combat champions, you have access to subclass counters as well as a choice of intrinsic anti-champion artifact mods. This season's artifact is the Queen's Force Sensor. The anti-champion mods available this week are Anti-Barrier Sidearm, Unstoppable Hand Cannon, and Unstoppable Bow. You also have exotic weapons and armor that can help with intrinsic mods as well. For Anti-Barrier, the Kinetic Bow Wish Ender, the Kinetic Linear Fusion Rifle Arbalist, the Kinetic Pulse Rifle Revision Zero, the Solar Energy Hand Cannon Ariana's Vow, the Solar Heavy Sword The Lament, and the Titan Gauntlet's Second Chance, which gain a second charge of a shield throw melee which becomes shield piercing and stuns barrier champions. For Unstoppable, the Kinetic Fusion Rifle Bastion, the Kinetic Hand Cannon Malfeasance, the Kinetic Scout Rifle Touch of Malice, the Solar Energy Sidearm Devil's Ruin, the Void Heavy Bow Leviathan's Breath, the Titan Gauntlet Sash and Wake, where Fusion Grenade hits stun Unstoppable Champions, and the Hunter Gauntlet Sathos' Embrace, which have a chance to stun Unstoppable Champions with their empowered Weighted Knife. The Nightfall featured weapon to obtain this week will be the Arc High Impact Frame Fusion Rifle Loaded Question. This will be the last time this season that this weapon will be available in its adept form, as it is leaving the loot pool on June 4th. The Loaded Question has a base impact of 90, a range of 52 and stability of 25. It can roll with Controlled Burst, Reservoir Burst and Harmony, with Envious Assassin, under pressure and auto loading holster. It has the origin trait of stunning recovery, where if you stun a champion, you partially refill the magazine, trigger health regen, and improve your recovery for a short duration. And Vanguard Vindication, where final blows with a weapon grant a small amount of health. Available in the 6v6 playlist will be Control. Control is a variation of Team Deathmatch, with the added variable of three capture points on the map, in which teams will need to work together to capture and hold the point. Guardians conquer capture points by standing on them while no enemies are in capture range. The process takes about 10 seconds and is not affected by the number of Guardians taking part in the capture. Each team begins with a capture point under their control, the one that is closest to their starting area. The third capture point will initially be neutral. Depending on the number of capture points held by a team, the points rewarded for killing an opponent varies. The scoring is calculated as follows. Base kill rewards plus one point. Zone advantage when a team holds two capture points, killing an enemy will reward the team with two points. Power play when a team holds all three capture points, killing an enemy will reward them with plus three points. Capture, conquering a capture point rewards the team that claimed it with plus one point. Capturing a point will reward you and your team a small portion of super energy. If you are on the point while it's captured, you will gain additional energy on top of this small portion. During a control match, there is only one power ammo spawn location. It will spawn in at 45 seconds and then every 120 seconds. Control matches feature an 8 minute time limit and all players will respawn automatically 5 seconds after the death mechanics. The first team to 150 points or the team that has the most points at the end of the time limit is declared the winner. And Momentum Control will also be available in the Party Relentless playlist. Momentum Control is a 6v6 PvP mode which is a variation on the regular control mode, where every weapon is significantly higher in lethality, meaning that you can take out your opponents much faster than normal. Respawns are instant, and defeating enemy players in momentum control will grant faster regeneration on your melee, grenade, and super. Players get increased damage resistance when they activate a super, to help counteract that little bit of extra damage that the guns give out. The mode also has increased capture speed on points and the radar is removed for every player. Achieve victory by capturing zones and defeating opponents. Elimination will also be available in the 3v3 playlist. Elimination is a 3v3 game mode that focuses on eliminating the enemy team. Teammates can revive each other, but cannot revive themselves. The first team to eliminate the other team wins the round. If neither team have been eliminated after two minutes, then a control point will spawn somewhere on the map. The team that captures the point will win the round. If neither team can capture the point, then whichever guardian is closest to the center of the point will win the round. Heavy ammo will spawn in the round after a team has won three rounds. The first team to win five rounds wins the match. And available in the Crucible Labs playlist will be Checkmate Survival. Checkmate Survival is a modified version of Survival. Just like in the regular mode, each team starts with a pool of shared respawns. The respawn pool cannot be refilled, and when a player dies they will consume one life from that pool. Players have a 7 second respawn timer, and when the team's respawn pool is depleted, players who cannot respawn remain in spectator mode until the round or match ends. Each round also features a 2 minute timer after which the round ends or enters overtime. Winning a round can be done by defeating opponents until they have depleted their respawn pools and eliminating the ones still standing or by having more lives left when the time runs out. 
If the timer runs out whilst the teams are tied, the round enters overtime. One more minute is added to the timer and a capture point from the control mode is introduced to the map, and both teams lose their unused respawns. The team that captures the point wins the round. If overtime also ends in a tie, the round ends and no teams receive the points. The first team to win four rounds is declared the winner of the match. Don't forget that the checkmate parameters are in play, with primary weapon damage being tuned to feel a little differently from the rest of the game. Players also have increased health and passive regeneration of the grenade, melee and class abilities have all been reduced by 50%, and supers by 40. Also you will not spawn in with special ammo, instead you will have to earn it by generating points from kills, assists, deaths, zone captures and gathering heavy ammo. You won't lose points accumulated on death and special ammo you earn persists through lives and rounds. Additionally, you will not drop special ammo on death. Delightful! Saint 14 will be back at the weekend with his mid-season refresh of Trials of Osiris Dominion, bringing with him a whole host of rewards for players who do make it to the lighthouse and open the chest. These include the Hero's Wake Exotic Ghost Shell, the Valiant Memory Exotic Ship, the Survivor's Journey Exotic Sparrow, the Visor Regala Shader, and High Stat Trials Armor. In this mid-season refresh, we also have some new and returning weapons, including the Solar Adaptive Frame Auto Rifle the Summoner, which has a base impact of 21, the range of 40 and stability of 41. It can roll with Kill Clip, Onslaught and Target Lock, with Overflow, Dynamic Sway Reduction and Heal Clip. It has the Origin Trait of Alacrity, where you gain increased reload, stability, aim assist and range when you are the last living member on your fireteam or running solo. And One Quiet Moment, where you gain increased reload speed and handling when out of combat. And we have the new Stasis Aggressive Frame Scout Rifle, the Prophet, which has a base impact of 100, a range of 59 and stability of 29. It can roll with Golden Tricorn, Kill Clip and Cascade Point, with Discord, Enlightened Action and Rapid Hit. It also has the Origin Trait of Alacrity and One Quiet Moment, with Text Balance Stock, where damaging a target whilst firing from the hip increase handling, reload speed and movement speed whilst aiming down sights. If you need a refresh, Trials of Osiris Dominion is still going to be the game mode that we know, a 3v3 PvP high stakes game mode, where two teams of three go head to head in a battle for control of a capture point. Teams can either work together to capture the control point or eliminate the enemy team to win the round. Only available from Friday Reset until Tuesday Weekly Reset, Trials gives every player the chance to show off their PvP skills to obtain some of Destiny's most sought after weapons and armour. Players that compete in Trials of Osiris will have all of their games tracked through a passage card, a ticket purchased from Saint 14 in the lower hang of the tower. In this mid-season refresh, Saint 14 is mixing things up with some new and revised passage cards. With the revised passage of Ferocity, if you have not been flawless for the week, losses after the third win will reset your card back to the third win instead of flooring your card, meaning you can try again for that flawless run without having to fully reset. And with the new passage of Persistence, losses following a win will remove that win from your card. Consecutive losses do not remove additional wins. Getting to 7 wins grants you a drop of the weekly adept weapon, regardless of how many losses you have taken. If your card is flawed, you will not be able to visit the lighthouse, but 7 wins on the card guarantees an adept drop. This card can be reset after 7 wins to try again for another drop. Saint 14 is also adding rewards for match completions by 3 person fire teams. You do not need to win to earn these rewards, but they are participation gated, so simply jumping off the map or sitting AFK in spawn will disqualify you from these rewards. You will also earn additional trials reputation, a 50% chance at getting the non-adept trials weekly weapon, and a 50% chance at getting a trials engram. But winning rounds and matches in trials will guarantee weapons, armor, pinnacle gear, master up materials, and even adept weapons. For those most skilled players who can reach the lighthouse with a flawless ticket of 7 games won with no losses, adept weapons have a chance to drop with every win after your flawless run. 5 round wins will bag you the match for your passage card. Also, by competing in trials, you do have the chance to pick up two pinnacle engrams from playing each week, one from 50 round wins and the other from winning seven games. These do not have to be done all in one go, but you do have to complete them before the weekly reset. This week's featured adept weapon to earn will be the Strand Adaptive Frame of Heavy Grenade Lord to the Cataphract GL3, which has a base blast radius of 50, velocity of 40 and stability of 44. It can roll with bait and switch, chain reaction and full court, with auto-loading holster, field prep and envious assassin. It has the origin traits of Alacrity, One Quiet Moment and Omelon Fluid Dynamics. This will also be the last time this season that this weapon will be available in its adept form, as it leaves the loophole on June 4th. Earn your honour, Guardian. For anyone who is just returning or catching up with content, we have Riven's Wishes, where players can visit Marasov in the Helm to accept a new weekly quest with a high-risk objective in the Dreaming City, such as completing legendary lost sectors or dungeons. Upon completion of these weekly objectives, players can return to Mara to receive a wish token. Each week, you can use this token to choose a prize from one of the three different categories. Category 1, Last Wish Residence, 
where you can choose a red border last wish raid weapon. These are the Kinetic Rapid Fire Frame Sniper Rifle Supremacy, the Kinetic High Impact Frame Scout Rifle Transfiguration, the Solar Adaptive Frame Rocket Launcher Apex Predator, the Kinetic Lightweight Frame Pulse Rifle Chattering Bone, the Arc Adaptive Frame Hank and Nation of Beasts, the Arc Adaptive Frame Fusion Rifle Techium Force, the Solar Lightweight Frame Bow Tyranny of Heaven, and the Void High Impact Frame Auto Rifle Age Old Bond. Category 2 Exotics, where you can choose a piece of Lightful Year Exotic Armor. For the Hunters, the Speedloader Slacks, Sir Tarachne's Facade, Triton Vice, and the Moth Keeper's Wraps. For the Titans, the Cadmus Ridge Lance Cap, Abeyant Leap, a Ball Warden, and the Pyrogale Gauntlets. For the Warlocks, Balador's Wrath Weavers, Swarmers, Cenotaph Mask, and the Briarbinds. Category 3 Miscellaneous, where you can choose from a variety of other rewards, such as Dawning and Fest of the Lost Mementos, Ascendant Shards, Ascendant Alloys, and Exotic Ciphers. Riven's Wishes will offer new quests for six weeks, but you will have time to complete them and earn rewards up through the Final Shapes release. That is amazing. Also continuing this week will be Moments of Triumph 2023, with a collection of 30 challenges celebrating everything you've been able to achieve in the past year. If you've been active, you'll likely already have some of these completed, which just gets you closer to getting the 26 you'll need for the 2023 title. Along the way, you'll also earn some event rewards, including the new Laurel Shell for your Ghost, and the Fire Guilt Quad Rig Sparrow, plus access to purchase the 2023 Moments of Triumph shirt. Also, this week we'll see bonus Crucible rewards available all week long. Plus, as a reminder, you can collect a free pile of 700 Bright Dust from the Eververse store every week up until the Final Shapes release. Get back out there. And that's it for the 22nd week of Season of the Wish. Thank you for watching. Allons-y. Guardian down.